Hello, today I welcome you to my world watches and in this video I'm going to show you pretty much everything about this Nautilus homage from Watterson. Let's see what it's all about. Now once again I have to give my sincere apologies for being gone for about two months now but there was a big reason for that and that was because I needed to learn for my exams so now I can proudly say that I've finished high school so that is that. Now that doesn't mean that I've forgotten watches, in fact I've bought and sold as much watches as I used to sell in about half a year so I've accumulated quite a wide assortment of watches to show you that actually includes a lot of Casios. And I wanted to start with something a bit more interesting, a bit more unusual to me personally. And I thought, why won't I show you a gold watch, not just any gold, but rose gold. And not just any rose gold, but fake rose gold. Of course, this watch is plated, but I think they've done quite a great job on it. We'll talk about that when we switch to cameras. I was looking for an auto this homage for quite some time now, and I just stumbled across this one randomly on AliExpress. All of the ones that I used to see had Chinese automatic movements and I kind of didn't want to risk it so I kept searching till I found this quartz one from Watterson and it was $35 so I thought why won't I try it and I have to say I was pleasantly surprised with how good this timepiece actually is and the amount of watch that you get for your money. By the way, in the next video, we will be taking a look at the Pagani Design PD1653 model. So if you're interested in seeing the review, make sure to subscribe. I should probably quit talking and now let's see the watch. So right off the bat, you get a pretty generic looking box with a Tessen name on top. Tessen is, I guess, the main brand that sells the automatic version of this watch as well as some other models. And Watterson is just this quartz nautilus homage either with or without gems on the bezel. Fun fact, Tessen in Swedish means thesis, I thought that was cool. Inside you get a watch on a white pillow wrapped safely in plastic so it won't scratch during shipping and also you get a sizing tool so that is a nice touch. That's pretty much it for the packaging, not much. As always let's start from dimensions, it was actually hard to measure the diameter because of the shape but the bezel is 38 millimeters in diameter, then at its widest is almost 45 millimeters, including the crown, and from side to side it's about 41 millimeters. The look to look distance is 44 millimeters, but because of this sort of a fixed first link, I'd say it's more of a 54 millimeters. The thickness is an astonishing 9.5 millimeters, and sized up for my 7 inch wrist, weighs 131 grams. Now you can see it on my wrist and I have to say it's a very well sized watch. It wears more like a 38-39 millimeter, and it feels perfect on wrist. Definitely one of the most comfortable watches that I've ever worn. The slim profile of it makes it that much more convenient as it will hide underneath any cuff. The shape of the case allows this watch to be worn by people with a lot smaller wrists and overall the presence of it is very aesthetic. The execution of the bracelet is near perfect, the sides on the inside of the bracelet could be a little less sharp but it doesn't get in the way when wearing this watch. It is an integrated bracelet with solid links and push pins. I like the fact that they went as far as to color the ends of the push pins in rose gold to match the look. It uses a butterfly clasp that sadly is not rose gold color but rather plain stainless steel and it operates how it should but with any butterfly clasp you will get an occasional accidental open up on wrist so that is something to take into consideration. Also another thing to consider is the fact that because of the clasp you won't be able to do any sort of micro adjustments so either you get a perfect fit or you don't. Same thing happened to me, if I remove one link it's too tight and if I add one it's a bit too loose but now I've actually grown to like a looser fit. Nevertheless the bracelet is done very nicely, the finishing is immaculate I would say, both polishing on the sides and on the middle links as well as brushing on the rest of the bracelet doesn't have any imperfections. Also because of the design it has a round form that conforms to the wrist and that adds to the comfortability aspect of course. Continuing down to the case, again the job on the finishes is great. The mix of polishing and brushing makes it really stand out, not only because it's a gold piece, but also because there are many shiny surfaces. Since we're at the case we can talk about the gold plating itself. I probably would have gotten the plain stainless steel variant, but the thing is, is that they don't stock up on those variants. 
You get to choose only from the rose gold ones. There are different dial colors, of course, but the choice of metal color is only one. I cannot say that I'm disappointed that I went with this one. I actually like it a lot. It's a stainless steel base and then they plated it with paint. I'm not sure what sort of method they used, but I have to say it is very durable. I've been wearing this watch a lot for the past month or so, even been to a party with it and it held up perfectly fine. There are small scratches here and there, but it doesn't fade or wear off. Also, I personally don't get green skin or anything like that, even when the case back is painted, which is usually left just plain stainless steel to avoid the coloring of your skin due to sweat. The rose gold shade is also very nice. A lot of times on jewelry it says that it's rose gold for example, and then when you get the product it appears almost pink. On this watch it's not the case. They went with classic rose gold and I very much like it. It doesn't look cheap. To complete the whole look I even ordered the rope chain to match the watch and again I've ordered three chains from which I thought I would choose and the exact same thing happened, only one of them was the correct shade, the other two were either too pink or too yellow. Now speaking about the crystal covering the dial, there is a claim of sapphire on the case back which is as true as this watch being real gold. I have no idea why is it there but yeah, it's not true. I went with a black dial variant because I think that gold looks especially good with a black outfit and so the black dial would match it. They've done quite a good job on it in my opinion, there are no misplaced hour indices or a crooked date window. The printing of the second markers is good and I like that they didn't clutter the dial. They kept it plain and simple, just water sun on top, no writing of quartz or anything like that. There are a couple of dust particles here and there but for this price it is expected. My only complaint on the dial would be that they could have went with a black date wheel, that would have been cool but then again they use a generic quartz movement and changing just the date wheel would probably be costly. Sadly the second hand doesn't hit the markers but it's not a big deal for me, in fact in the future I'm planning on taking the second hand off completely, I think it should look even better. The loom is close to non-existent, doesn't charge up that much and fades quite quickly. The operation of this watch is as simple as it gets, one pull and you set the date and the second pull to adjust the time. And that is pretty much it about the watch. So there you go, here's my full review on this Waters and Nautilus homage. So to sum everything up, I think this watch is just great. There are very minor QC issues like the dust on the dial and of course the mineral crystal when the case back says it's sapphire. But apart from that, this watch is just great. Of course the originality in terms of design is not found, but you get something that is really close to the real deal and you can definitely scratch the itch with it. As I've said, there is an automatic version as well as quartz one like this but with gems on the bezel. I will leave links to all of them in the description down below if you're interested. And as always, if you have any sort of questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. And if you like my video, please leave a like and also consider subscribing and hitting that little bell so you'll get notified when I upload a new video. And now thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.